This is a lesson from my in-depth course on logo design in Illustrator. These are just a few examples of my previous university students' logos they designed in my class. In this online course, you can learn about brainstorming logos, meeting with a client, sketching logos, designing logos, and getting paid in logo design. There's a coupon link in the description if you want to learn more or enroll. Thanks! One design technique you might want to consider is using negative space in logos. And in this lesson, you'll learn how to use Illustrator to create this effect of negative space. So if you're familiar with negative space already, you probably are familiar with Edgar Rubin's vase. It's one of the most well-known examples of negative space. So you see either a vase in the middle, or you see two profiles of people looking at each other. And in logo design, the purpose is not to just to see the negative space or the space that's not negative space, but just really both spaces. All right, so a couple more quick examples, then we'll jump into using Illustrator to create negative space and some techniques to do there. So FedEx is a corporate example that you're probably familiar with. If you see, it's just a typographic logo, of course, two different colors. But in the negative space between the E and the X, there's that arrow, meaning getting from point A to point B, and that's what FedEx does, of course. And another example, Safari into Africa logo. It was created uh, over in the UK, a graphic design uh, consultancy called GLAD, and they were doing this for a client called Safari into Africa, just a Safari operator based in Zambia, uh, in the southern part of Africa. And so you see this, and you see an elephant probably first, then their name, and then the negative space between two of the elephant's feet, is the continent of Africa. So that's pretty cool. And this one's really well done. This was for a book cover design uh, by Alexander Johnson over in Leeds in the UK. And you can look at this, you see the M of course for Moby Dick, uh, the great American novel. And you can also see the whale's tail right there. But you can, there's also the harpoon right there above it. So that's a effective method of negative space there. And another well-done example is this one for the Bronx Zoo. This is actually by Caroline Madigan while at the Pratt Institute. This is a student project, uh, but it looks just as good, if not better, than a lot of the actual logos out there that are used by companies. So this one you can see in the negative space, just the cityscape, uh, the Bronx, and then you've got uh, two giraffes and three birds. I think it's balanced pretty well. And so I think that's really well done creative use of negative space. And finally, two more examples real quick. The Guild of Food Writers. This one was by 300 million, uh, the design firm. And you can see there obviously a pen, like an old school pen that you would almost like dip in ink, and then the, the spoon for eating in the negative space. And it's symmetrical there, you can tell. And then one more example, Spartan Golf Club. This one was from Richard Fontenot, graphic designer in Lexington, uh, Kentucky. And so you can see the golfer there swinging, almost like in video games. You have that little uh, level thing there up at the top, the radial pattern. And then you can see that as the headdress of the Spartan, as well as the person there, the golfer, is also the face. It's a negative space between the arms is also the eye of the Spartan soldier. So let's get started using Illustrator to create negative space. Now if we want to do something like the FedEx example, right? I'll just type in FedEx with the type tool, click and drag the corner here. And we probably need a thicker font. So for this example, uh, I'll just go with impact. All right. And you'll notice right away it's not making an arrow. So all you have to do, you could distort it a little bit, but depending on what font you have it's going to be more difficult or more work at least but regardless you just want to right click over it with the selection tool and then go to create outlines or control click it if you're on a Mac and the thing that they do is if I click on the X here knows how it selects everything else what I need to do is go to object ungroup so now I can use the black arrow the selection tool and just be editing this one letter now that I've outlined it so what I want to do is click and drag the top down so it's flush with E, the middle of the E there. Let me bring it down a little bit more. So it's probably close enough. I'd zoom in if I was doing this actual. There we go. And you notice it's not symmetrical, so you'd want to fix that. You could use the white and hold shift if you don't want it to move, you know, except in certain ways. So you'd really just detail that with the white arrow 
and move it over to make it really customized. All right, so this I could actually bring over so it's flush. So we're getting there, so you get the idea. So that's a simple example, just having a negative space between letters. But for some of those more complicated ones uh, that were still you know, simple enough to be a good logo, what you could do for those is just use the Pathfinder panel. So if you have some kind of shape, I'll just use the ellipse tool. I'll just draw out a shape here, and I'll just give it some kind of color. All right, and so the, the difficult way to do this would be to use the pen tool, add anchor points, you know, along here, and then bring them in with the white direct selection tool and try to create some kind of negative space or whatever, right? We don't have to do that though. With the Pathfinder tool, it's right over here. If you don't have it, just go to Window and then Pathfinder. And that brings that up. And what you want to do is let's just, I'm going to use the pen tool. I'll just create some kind of custom shape here. Almost like a spoon. It won't be symmetrical, but just doing the technique here. So we have that on top and then the other one below. I'm going to make it a different color just so it stands out so you can see. All right. So you have one shape on top, one shape below. You just need to select both of them, click and drag over both of them with the selection tool. And if you hover over on the Pathfinder panel, you got Unite, Minus Front, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what you can do is click Minus Front, and then it cuts that part out wherever the top part was, and then leaves uh, the bottom part. So there's some negative space. So I would say practice with this, uh, just creating different things. In another lesson, I show you how to use custom shapes from Photoshop and bring them over into Illustrator. You could try that as well. Customize it first after you bring in Illustrator, then put it above another simple shape. Uh, there's a lot of different possibilities. Like if you want to just draw, you know, some kind of wave here, right? If it was a surf company or something like that, and you notice it doesn't curve enough. So you go back to the white arrow, bring that curve down a little bit more, bring that one over there. All right, same thing. Click and drag around both of them, and then minus front. All right, so that's negative space, the technique. The principle, though, is you just want to create something in the middle, or it doesn't have to be in the middle, but oftentimes it is, that has some kind of recognizable shape that you might not see right away, but you should be able to see it. The average person should be seeing it, and it obviously relates to the theme or the, the branding of the client. Like, for example, this one I made in literally just about four or five minutes. It's got the negative space. You can tell those are just, you know, a fish and a bird. These are actually from Photoshop, those uh, custom shapes. So you would not want to use that in an actual logo. I'm just showing it as another example again. You'd want to bring it over from Photoshop, then customize it, uh, move the points and paths around, and then use it if you want. This is just another example. I mean, since the other one was a zoo example, I just this one's not as complicated, but done with the Pathfinder panel. In another lecture, I do go over the Shape Builder tool and the Live Paint Bucket tool, which can be pretty useful. But if all you're really wanting to do is take one shape and subtract it from the shape below it, it's so much easier and faster just to use the Pathfinder panel and just use minus front, all right? So have fun with that and save it as some kind of raster file if you want and share it in the discussion board for a critique from me and the other students. All right, thanks.